Welcome back to The Jazz Pursuit. In this video, we're going to look at the beautiful Hoagie Carmichael tune, Georgia On My Mind, written in 1930. Before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe below to stay up to date with new content and releases. Enjoy! So, first off, let's look at the key bits of information. Georgia On My Mind can be played as a ballad or as a slow swinger but it's in 4-4 time and usually in the key of F major. The form is 32 bars divided into an A-A-B-A -A -A structure, with each section lasting 8 bars. We start with the A section, which we then repeat, then we move on to the B section, ending with the final A section. Now, let's get stuck into the harmony in the A section. The A section starts on chord 1. Because Georgia On My Mind is in the key of F major, this is F major 7. Then we have a 5-1 cadence to chord 6, a chord built off the 6th note of the F major scale, and built using the notes of the F major scale. So this chord is D minor 7. If D minor 7 is the 1 chord in our 5-1 cadence, then the 5 chord is upper 5th from D, A7. For a quick refresh on 2-5-1s and different chord types, check out the videos above. So, we start on chord 1, F major 7, and then have a 5-1 cadence to chord 6, A7 to D minor 7. Next, we move to chord 4, a chord built off the 4th note of the F major scale, B flat major 7, before going back home to chord 1, F major 7. Let's see how those chords look at the piano. For now, I'll play the root of each chord in my left hand and the root third, fifth and seventh in my right hand. Cool. So from here, we have a one, six, two, five progression a common harmonic movement used in jazz standards. As we know, chord 1 is F major 7 and chord 6 is D minor 7. Then we move to chord 2, a chord built off the second note of the F major scale, G minor 7, leading to chord 5, C7. At this point, we have two different endings. The first time ending, which takes us back to the start of the A section for the repeat, and the second time ending, which takes us on to the B section. Let's take a look at the first time ending first. This is taking us back to F major and the start of the second A section. So we use another 1, 6, 2, 5 progression to take us there. F major 7 to D minor 7 to G minor 7 to C7, which then resolves to F major 7 chord 1 in the first bar of the second A section. In contrast, in the second time bar, we're moving on to the B section, which moves away from F major. So we close off the A section by simply resolving to F major 7 for two bars. Let's hear how the chords of the A section sound. Again, I'll play the root in my left hand and the root third, fifth and seventh in my right hand. Brilliant! That's the harmony done for the A section. There are some more chords that we can add, but these are the fundamentals, and we'll cover the extras later in the video. Now, let's move on to look at the melody. The melody is built using only the notes of the F major scale. I think of the first two phrases as questions. They both start on the same note A, the first then rises up to a C, and the second answers this and falls to a G. Then the third phrase extends this idea. Again, it starts on an A before jumping up to a D, then back to the A, finishing by falling to a G. The next phrase 
then walks through the F major scale from the root to the third A, before jumping in thirds through the F major 7 chord tones, A to C to E. The next little fragment then perfectly outlines our G minor 7 chord. From the 5th D we fall to the 3rd B flat, then back to the 5th D and then fall to the 2nd and the root, A to G. The first time then ends with a bluesy inflection. We have the 5th on our G minor 7 chord D which falls to a G sharp on our C7 chord, a semitone lower than our starting note in the A section, A. In the second time through the A section, everything is identical until we get to the sixth bar. At this point, the melody closes down to end the A section, rather than rising from the B flat to the D on our G minor 7 chord, we invert it and fall down from the B flat to the D, ending the section by playing the third and the root in the key of F. A to F. Let's hear how the melody of our A section sounds in time. I'll play the root and seventh of each chord in my left hand and the melody in my right hand. Great, now let's take a look at the harmony in the B section. The B section moves away from F major to the relative minor D minor and the harmony moves around a lot less than the A section and the main theme is recadencing. Let's take a closer look. We start the B section on our new chord 1, D minor 7 and then immediately recadence through a 5-1 cadence. A7 is chord 5 which leads us back to chord 1, D minor 7. Recadencing is a really good way of keeping the harmony and the bass line moving when we're effectively sitting in just one harmonic area. Then we do another recadence, only this time we go to chord 6, B flat 7, and then back to chord 1, D minor 7. We then repeat the first recadence again, up to chord 5, a7 and then back to chord 1, D minor 7, before ending the first line with a final recadence, this time to chord 4, G7, then back again to chord 1, D minor 7. So, to summarise, we start on chord 1, D minor 7, then recadence via chord 5, A7, then back to D minor 7, then we recadence again, this time via chord 6, B flat 7, then back to D minor. Then we recadence the first way again via chord 5, A7, back to D minor. And then we finish the line by recadencing via chord 4, G7. The next line starts a similar way with another 5 1 recadence, A7 to D minor 7. Then from here, we need to start thinking about getting back to F major for the final A section. We get back to F major through a 3-6-2-5 progression, similar to the 1-6-2-5 progressions we had in the A section, and this happens in the final two bars of the B section. Chord 3 is A minor 7, chord 6 is D minor 7, chord 2 is G minor 7, and chord 5 is C7, which leads us to F major 7 and the start of the final A section. The only thing left to do now is join our D minor 7 in the 6th bar of the B section to our A minor 7 in the 7th bar. And we do this through a 5 1 cadence to A minor. So if A minor 7 is the 1 in our 5 1 cadence, this means our 5 chord must be E7. Super! That's the B section harmony done. Now, let's hear how it sounds on the piano. I'll keep the roots in my left hand and the root third, fifth and seventh in my right hand.
Super. Now let's have a look at the melody in the B section. The melody in the B section is very clever and develops one initial phrase three times to generate the whole melody. This initial phrase also outlines our D minor tonality. It starts on the root D, then moves to the third F, then the fourth G, and the fifth A. The first time we hear this phrase, the melody then falls back down. After we reach the A, we fall back to the third F, down to the root D, and then back to the third F. We then hear the phrase for a second time, and it keeps ascending. After the A, we enclose the sixth B natural, with a scale note either side. We jump up to the seventh C, then down to the fifth A, and then land on our target note, B natural. Then we hear the phrase for a third time, and this time it continues rising through the seventh, root, and ninth, C, D, E, before falling to the third of our A minor seven chord, C. The melody then falls to an A, and then back to the C, before approaching the fifth of the C7 chord, G, from a scale note above. Let's now hear the melody of the B section in time. I'll keep the root and seven of each chord in my left hand, and the melody in my right hand. Brilliant! Then we play the A section again to finish the tune, using our second time ending. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is a transition to the B section, from F major 7 in the second time bar to D minor 7 at the start of the B section. We do this through another 5-1 cadence. If D minor 7 is our 1 chord, then our 5 chord is A7. Now, before we finish, Let's look at some additional chords we can add to our A section. First off, rather than just our 5-1 cadence from A7 to D minor 7, we can turn this into a 2-5-1 cadence. Because we're in F major, this means our 2 chord will be E half diminished. For more information on minor 2-5-1s, check out the video above. So we have chord 1, and then a minor 2-5-1 to chord 6, D minor. Then rather than leaving the bass stagnant on D minor for a whole bar, this can descend to its own 7, D minor 7 over C, which helps leads us to B flat major 7. Another trick we can do is tweak our 1, 6, 2, 5 progressions to 3, 6, 2, 5 progressions to keep our bass movement more interesting. Chord 3 is A minor 7, and this works as a substitution for chord 1 because it's the upper structure of chord 1. A, C, E, G, A minor 7, would be the 3rd, 5th, 7th and 9th of an F major 7 chord. The last tweak is about chord 6 in our 3, 6, 2, 5s. Chord 6 is technically a minor 7 chord, if we build it using the notes of our key. However, if we tweak it to a dominant chord, it gives us more forward motion in our cadences. Now, let's hear the A section with these tweaks. Great! So that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Do check out our Patreon page where you can get PDF handouts for each video and vote in weekly polls to determine the content of our next video. Do like and subscribe and leave any questions you may have in the comments sections below. Happy practicing.